This is a little demonstration on using the James Millen grid dip meter as a signal generator. This is the uh, grid dip meter model 90651. It has a logging scale here, a thumb wheel, and a color chart here with some uh, frequencies for different uh, coils that you put in the back. Here we have the on off switch, a uh, plate switch on and off, and a headphone jack. On the back is a receptacle to take these coils that you can put in there. And this is a little rack that holds the coils. There's seven coils, they call them A through G. So A is 1.7 to 4.5 mega cycles, B is 2.9 to 7.5. C is 6.4 to 16 megacycles. D is 13 to 32 megacycles. E is 25 to 60 megacycles. F is 60 to 150 megacycles. And G is 140 to 300 megacycles. So it goes up pretty high. So to listen to it, instead of using one of my old tube short wave radios, I'm going to use this AOR AR8600 because it goes up that high. So you take the coil and you plug it into the rear and it'll put out a tone that a receiver can pick up. I have a realistic DX160 across the room and uh, I was just playing with this and it was hearing this all the way across the room without much of an antenna. So uh, I'm going to spin the thumb wheel now. Right now this radio is 1.8 megahertz or 1800 kilohertz or megacycles and this has got the A coil in it 1.7 to 4.5 and I'm very close to 1.8 I'm gonna and that is exactly on 1.8 so it puts out a nice tone I don't know if you can align a receiver with it but it puts out a a pretty good tone. So now let's try further up in the band. Let's try putting that at about 3.8. I'll do enter 3.8. I have this on CW. And that's a little off. This is showing um, about 3.89 on there. Well, it stops because it's very sensitive to movement. Not the, mo not the most accurate thing in the world. But let's test out the uh, other coils. Okay, here I am on the B coil at 4.0 on both the radio and the uh, grid dip meter. So now I'm going to try uh, 7.0. I'll spin this. Try to do it on camera here. And that's just about dead on 7.0. Okay, I put in the C coil, which is 6.4 to 16, and I just left it on uh, 7.0. And uh, that's dead on 7.0. So, see, the high end is 16. Let's try 14. Oh, that was, <laughs> I think that was a, a multiple, uh, a harmonic we just heard there. And now I'm uh, dead on 14. A little warbly there. All right, let's try the next coil. All right, the C coil is 13 to, uh, sorry, the D coil is 13 to 32 megacycles. And uh, I just left the radio at 14. And this is dead on 14. So it goes up to 32, so let's try 30. 
And I'll spin this up to 30. There it is on 30. It's not dead on, but it's pretty close. This is a really old piece of equipment, and the receiver, you know, obviously is very well calibrated. So now we'll go to E, which is 25 to 60 megacycles. Okay, staying at uh, 30 megacycles, I am on uh, coil E, 25 to 60 megacycles, and the tuning is so coarse here, I'm having a lot of trouble getting it to uh, stay uh, right on. I can go buy it, and then it's... Uh, it won't stay on there. But I am on 30, where it's making the, the most noise. I switched this to the upper sideband from CW, see if that would help. And uh, it didn't. But, all right, let's try at the other end of the range, let's try 50. 50. See if we can hear that. Well, I'm going by 50. I can't hear it. But this coil's been a bit temperamental while it was off screen, trying to get it to even make a tone. Well, we'll call the the 50th fail for now, and we'll move on to uh, F, which is 60 to 150. So we'll try 70 at the low end. Not getting it tonight. Now I'm getting it. Just wiggled a few things and I got it. So I'm at 70, which is right. There's an 80 kind of tucked back there. You can't see it. So I'm on this scale, the 60 to 150, and I'm at 70. You can hear it in there. Hey, we got it. So at the other end is uh, 150. So let's try 130. Let's see if we can get that. I hear it. You can hear it in there. And there's uh, 120 and 140, so 130 is right in the middle. It's at about 129. And the last coil looks a little different. Last coil looks like that. Let's see, that's 140 to 300. So let's try 160 megahertz for the bottom end of the test. Okay, you can hear it in there, and I'm on uh, 160. 150 is just to the left, 170 is just to the right. Actually, that's 175, but okay. But the scale is 160. You can hear it in there. Now we'll go to the high end. We'll go to, say, uh, 280. All right, I hear it in there. 
Um, you can see 300 over here to the right and 350, 250 on the left. So the, the scale is uh, very coarse, but I'm going to call it good. So that's how you can use the Millen, James Millen grid depth meter as a signal generator. These show up at Hamfest from time to time. They show up on eBay from time to time. And uh, they're a handy tool. Bob Heil did a video on uh, using it as a different function on testing uh, coils. But uh, this, this has four different functions. Um, it says in the manual here, which I just printed out, uh, it'll be a grid dip oscillator for use as, as an oscillating frequency meter to determine the resonant frequency of de-energized circuits. I think that's what he did. Then there's a signal generator, uh, oscillating detector for determining fundamentals or harmonics of frequencies of energized circuits. And the fourth thing is tuned RF diode or non-oscillating detector. And I won't read any more. It's really dry stuff. So, but that is the Millen grid dip meter.